Hey everybody. So in this video, using an inventory grid as an example, I want to show how CSS grid can make really tricky layouts really easy to implement. Whether you're new to CSS or you've been writing CSS for a while and just haven't picked up grid yet, this video is for you. CSS grid has a lot to it. We're barely going to scratch the surface in this video. I've got all my favorite resources for learning more about grid in the description below. And hey, before we get started, I upload game dev tutorials and content to this YouTube channel. If you're interested in that kind of thing, please subscribe. So I've thrown together a little mock-up here in Figma of what we want to try to create today. Uh, we have this inventory grid, and on a wider screen, like on a desktop computer, uh, we've got the layout happening in a certain way, where we've got these two kind of major blocks, and then other items kind of fill in around it in this way. Uh, but when the screen gets skinnier, like on a mobile device, we want the elements to sort of stack in this certain way. Now, historically, without something like CSS Grid, this kind of layout would be really tricky to pull off. We've got a lot of different elements here that have kind of different sizes and they line up just right. Uh, we'd have to take really special care to make sure that the gutters are even all over the place. Uh, we're going to see that CSS Grid makes this super easy. So here we are in the code pen demo for today's video. Um, I've got some pre-written HTML here, but there's really not much going on. There's a header that has this inventory grid text in it, and it's wrapping to a certain point. Uh, we have a container div called layout, and it's also receiving the same wrapping treatment so that it kind of stays nice and center in the screen here. And then I've got just a bunch of divs. The divs have a class called card, and then each one has kind of a unique identifier in the form of a class. So card A, B, C, D, E, et cetera, um, all the way through H. In the CSS here, I've got just a little bit to get us started. Basically just um, some basic styles on the body to give it the blue color, some of the card treatment with some shadows and some border radius. All of our work is going to happen here in the layout and below. And what we want to do is first just get the boxes in the right place to see the grid concepts working. And then we'll go ahead and start adding the graphics and text. So the first thing we're going to do is add display grid to our layout container. Uh, CSS Grid is similar to Flexbox in, a, in the way that some moves you make on the container itself and then other moves you make on the children elements, and we'll cover that in a second. Now on its own, this isn't going to do anything. You can see that our layout hasn't changed. That's because we need to also apply some instructions on the layout of our grid. And so if you remember from our design, uh, the thing we're building is broken out into four different columns. And columns go vertically. And so what we want to do is tell our grid here that we're working in four different columns. And so to do that, we're going to use the rule grid template columns. And I'm going to type this four times. One FR, one FR, one FR, one FR. So FR here stands for fraction. That's a new unit type in CSS. And because we've written it four times here, the grid knows to take all available width and split it into four even columns. So see if I down this to just three times, we'll see the layout on the right go to three columns wide. You don't have to use FR here. You can use almost any type of value, really. So if I go like 100 pixels over here, that leftmost column is always going to be locked to 100 pixels wide, while the other ones will stretch to whatever area they have. Putting this back to one FR, uh, it's also possible, if you don't like the idea of writing this four times, if you know the value's the same every time, you can also uh, use a rule called repeat, and then tell it how many times you want it to repeat, and then what you want it to use. So we'll say one FR here, and that will give us the same results. However, I kind of like how readable this looks. To me, this just feels nice and visual, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back to FRs. Glancing at the design again, we're also dealing with distinct rows here, where we have a few elements that we want to take and have them stretch down to a certain point. And so what we can do is also define rows, just like this, template, grid template rows, and then same thing, it takes the same pattern. This time we're going to give it three distinct one FRs. So now our columns and rows are defined. It's looking good. You can see it kind of working over here. But the elements are all butting up against each other. What we want to do is uh, add some space between them. And in grid, that's so easy. You just come down here and add a rule called grid gap. And you can give this whatever value you want. Uh, I'll start with 1m. And now you see that the elements are all nice and evenly spaced out with very little effort on our end. You can uh, play with this value if you want more space. And grid will just do the rest of the work. Now to better visualize the grid stop options that we've created here, what we can do is come in and inspect one of these elements. And then if you find the parent where display grid is defined, um, any modern dev tools these days are gonna have a grid option. So in Chrome, you just like click this grid button. And then now you see these red 
uh, track lines have appeared on our grid and they give us some information about what's going on here. So if you look at the horizontal and vertical axis, see we've got uh, one, two, three, four. These are positions on the track that we can use in our child elements to stretch them out um, to certain points on the grid. We have that going both ways, horizontally and vertically. Now, for example, per our design, we want to take box B and stretch that out to start right here where it's starting now, but we want it to end at point four. Similarly, we want it to be taller than what it is now. We want to start at point one on the row axis and have it go all the way down to point three here so that it's about this big. Uh, card B here has its own unique class, card B. And so what we want to do is grab that with CSS, so card B, and we're going to apply a new rule called uh, grid column. And what this is going to do is um, define how much space on the column axis we want this card to take up. And so the way it works is like a starting position and then an ending position. And so like we saw in the dev tools, we want it to start on position two and then go all the way to position four. And so you do that with a slash, separate with a slash, so two, and we want it to end in four. And now we see that the width of the card has expanded to take up two different spaces. And you know, that took up more space, so it ended up bumping a child onto the third row. Also, per the design, we want this card B to be taller than what we see now. We want it to take up um, spaces going the other way as well. And so to do that, you have a equivalent rule for grid row. And so we want to start at that position one up here, and then uh, we want to end at position three. So that's one, two is right here, and then three is right here. That should make card B take up this much space. So we'll apply start at one, end at three. Oops. And so here we go. Our card is expanding both horizontally and vertically at the same time. All of the nice spacing is preserved. Okay, and per the design, at least on desktop, we want the C block here to also expand vertically to cover up kind of this much space. Just like before, we're gonna grab card C with CSS. Oops. Uh, and we're gonna give it, same thing, grid column. We wanna keep it where it is. So we'll say uh, we wanna start at four and then go to five. Again, that's uh, you know one, two, three, four starts right here. And then it's gonna go to five this way. And we want it to be the same height as B. So we'll add the same grid row rule there. And now block C is stretching to be the same height. And just like that, we've achieved our desktop layout. Taking a quick glance at our mobile layout again, uh, when our screen gets to a certain size, we want those two main blocks to kind of be on top and full width. Uh, but after that, everything else can go in columns of two. So let's see how we can do that. So to change the behavior of the grid uh, and a certain screen size, what we can do is add a media query. So I'll come down here and say, uh, at media, max width, we're just gonna go kind of um, start default by desktop and then opt into mobile as we go smaller. So we'll say max width 600 pixels. A lot of people like to work the opposite way. Um, it's, everybody's different. Now, as we get smaller here, I'll go ahead and kind of put us down here. Uh, we want to take each card and we're gonna override a uh, grid column. I guess not all of them have it, but in this condition, we want each card to say grid column uh, this time we'll say span two, and what that's going to do is um, tell each grid item that they should go two wide, two grid cells wide. So that's great for these bottom ones, but remember that we want blocks B and C here uh, to continue to go full width. And so what we'll do instead is kind of override those. So card B, we're going to give it a grid column instruction to start at point one and then stretch all the way to point five and the same idea for its grid row, where we wanna start at position one and just go down by two. Card C is gonna look almost the same, where we want uh, to go full width wide. So we'll start at one and go over to five. And then for its row, it starts a little bit further down on the grid. And so we're gonna say start at two and then end at three. And now you can see that our media query works. On desktop, we get that layout that we started with. And then as we go smaller, it stacks. And I think this is pretty sweet because if you look at the visual appearance of the elements here, they're in this like totally different order, right? Uh, but just with a few lines of CSS, we're able to get a completely different layout without having to manipulate the DOM or do anything wacky like that. So CSS Grid, super powerful, super flexible. It was really easy for us to get this basic layout going.
So now we have our basic layout, here it is, and now all we have to do to finish the demo is to fill the boxes with content. So I'm gonna come in here and just paste in some code. Each box here has an image container, and so that's just a div. Inside that, there's an SVG position to the bottom, that's the shadow, and then an image tag that brings in the right sprite. There's also a text label in here that tells you what the thing in the inventory is. Uh, in the styles here, there's also this little hover effect. So if I hover over the bowling ball here, it kind of levitates into the air. And so I'm gonna repeat that process now by filling in the same content, swapping out the item, uh, in each grid cell here. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it was a gentle introduction into the world of CSS Grid. It really is nice to use and it can empower crazy, really interesting layouts and in only a few lines of CSS. Remember, there's some really great resource links in the description of this video. So for more information about CSS Grid and all the amazing things you can do with it, definitely check those out. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time.